I done been arrested for stuff I done really did before. Ain't nobody put the cuss this goddamn track. Right. Allegation is an allegation. Until what? Whatever time the camera show me not robbing no damn body. Today I've got a story to share with you, and it's the case of none other than the infamous the baby, or should I say Jonathan Kirk? Yes, in January 2020, and the baby is all set to rock the stage at a Miami nightclub. The crowd is hyped, the beats are banging, but little did anyone know that things were about to take a seriously dark turn. You see, the producer who was supposed to pay the baby his hard-earned cash didn't hold up his end of the deal. Now, violence is never the answer, but the baby decided to take matters into his own hands. Yep, he went rogue. Now, here's the thing. Despite having CCTV footage, the baby managed to pull off the great escape. Yep, straight out of their hands. Now, I've got to admit, there's a tinge of remorse and sadness in this story. On the one hand, we've got a talented rapper trying to make a living, and on the other hand, a situation that spiralled out of control. But how did he really make it out? Let's see. Let's start with the night. In January 2020, the baby had a scheduled performance at a nightclub, but things took a dark turn when the club owner didn't pay him the full amount he was owed. The baby got angry and punched the owner multiple times in the face. His crew also joined in, beating up the owner and robbing him of his phone, credit card and cash. They left the owner lying on the ground, helpless and alone. The only evidence of the attack was blurry CCTV footage that showed a group of men jumping on the victim. The baby, however, didn't just run away and hide. He came back to the crime scene a few hours later, thinking he had escaped capture. But to his surprise, the police had been tipped off about his involvement and were waiting for him. They arrested him on the spot. Despite the strong evidence against him, the baby decided not to get a lawyer and remained silent. So you don't want to answer any questions, period, or are you? He tried to come up with a story, claiming that his manager was negotiating with another nightclub promoter for a different performance, but the money they were offering was stolen, and the promoter was acting strange. It was a weak story, but without clear witnesses and only blurry footage, the baby hoped it would be enough to get him off the hook. As the investigation continued, rumors started to spread about a bigger conspiracy involving not only the baby, but also other people in the hip hop community. People whispered about bribes, extortion, and even murder, all for the sake of money and power. The case became a sensational story that captured the city's attention and the charges engaging in organized criminal activity. Despite all the evidence, the baby kept insisting that he was innocent. He claimed he had nothing to do with the attack and that he was a victim caught up in a web of lies. Now, like we said before, the police had very little evidence to solve the crime, relying on blurry CCTV footage that didn't provide much clarity. The baby, however, was no fool. He knew that he had to be cautious with his words if he wanted to protect himself. During the interrogation, he remained calm and insisted he had nothing to do with what happened outside. An incident occurred at the hotel, 1500 Southwest First Avenue, that you were there for, correct? Wait, sir. The baby explained that his manager had been in talks with an event promoter about performing at a nightclub called Cafe Iguana Pines. However, the money they were offering turned out to be stolen, and the promoter's behavior seemed suspicious during the negotiation. Because of this, the baby decided to leave without causing a scene. He argued that it wouldn't make sense for him to commit a crime over a small amount of money and an iPhone, when he regularly earned large sums of money and had no need for such actions. You'd have let me on my room, you would have saw close to a quarter million dollars cash legally a hard earned money. Despite the baby's seemingly plausible explanation, the detectives remained unconvinced. They were determined to uncover the truth and were willing to push the baby to reveal information or even confess. The baby understood the gravity of the situation, but refused to lose his composure. He knew that staying calm and composed was crucial to maintain control over the situation. The interrogation between the baby and the detectives continued, each side carefully choosing their words and strategies. The baby was careful not to display aggression or admit any wrongdoing, while the detectives persisted in their relentless pursuit of the truth. Inside the interrogation room, the atmosphere grew increasingly charged with anticipation. The baby knew that his cool demeanor was his best defense against the detectives' relentless questioning. He refused to yield, determined to protect his innocence and avoid self-incrimination. 
Now, if you look carefully, you'll notice in the interrogation footage that there's something unsettling about Kirk's demeanor. He speaks softly, almost whispering, creating an air of mystery that captivates your attention. The detectives are questioning him about the robbery, but Kirk doesn't seem eager to reveal much. When asked where he was coming from, he brushes it off, simply saying that he went out to get some food. However, his pauses and avoidance of eye contact suggest he's hiding something important. The detectives press him for more information, particularly about how he ended up at the scene of the crime. But Kirk evades their questions, maintaining his control over the situation. He talks about a phone call and speculates that someone may have tipped off the police, fueling his paranoia and distrust. He hints at having personal troubles, but remains vague about the details, unwilling to share more. Even without a lawyer present, Kirk seems well aware of how to navigate the conversation. He carefully avoids providing any incriminating evidence that could link him to the crime. He boasts about contracts and emphasizes that everything he does is legally binding. He adamantly denies any wrongdoing, asserting that there was no fight or altercation that could have gone wrong. Now, the cops weren't about to give up on this case. They literally wanted to get one suspicious word out of his mouth, and they were pushing him to his maximum. But still, this guy seemed to be calm and composed, almost as if he held some kind of power over the situation. Despite their relentless questioning, Kirk stuck to his story. He explained that the event he was involved in had been doomed from the start. The person who booked him for the performance had made a series of mistakes, and they were desperately trying to cover them up. Kirk claimed that he was merely asked to do a walkthrough of the nightclub, and there was no intention of committing any crime. He urged the police to review the security footage to support his account. The detectives, impressed yet frustrated by Kirk's unwavering demeanor, took a back step to reassess their approach. They knew that they had to find a way to break through his calm facade and uncover the truth. In a surprising turn of events, when they returned to the interrogation room, their focus shifted. Instead of continuing their questioning, they inquired about Kirk's personal belongings that were left in his hotel room. Kirk, still considered the prime suspect in the investigation, was held in jail while the detectives gathered evidence. However, he strongly refused to allow them access to his belongings, challenging the detectives to find an alternate solution. The weight of the charges against Kirk was immense. If found guilty, he could face up to 15 years in prison and a hefty fine of $10,000, not to mention additional charges for battery. What you're charged with here, sir, is a crime of battery. The detectives were determined to gather the evidence they needed to secure a conviction, but without Kirk's cooperation or the crucial security footage, their task became more challenging. Surprisingly, after spending a mere 48 hours in jail, Kirk was released. The charges against him were dropped just two months later, leaving him a free man. It was a remarkable outcome, considering the gravity of the accusations and the lack of legal representation. Kirk had managed to navigate the treacherous waters of the criminal justice system, emerging unscathed from trouble. Now, during this interrogation, it was clearly Kirk's ability to maintain his composure under intense scrutiny. It left everyone wondering about the truth that still remains hidden. But no one knows the truth, just him. Now, in the end, what do you guys think? Did he do it, or was he just trying to help himself out of trouble that could rise from this acquisition? Do drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Anyways, we'll be back with another episode soon. Until then, stay tuned for more stories.